is coming up is our juried show. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we just started recording. Okay, so our juried show um, will take place in July. Actually, the submissions will take place in July. So this workshop will help artists figure out how to do online submissions. And then the actual juried show is August, September at the new Scranton Library in the beautiful new uh, spaces that they have there. So we're excited and there will be a live and in-person reception, which we're very excited about on Thursday, August 12th. So again, thanks to Mary Ann. Thank you, Bob, for offering your knowledge to us, sharing your knowledge, Bev, um, Shermeyer, Jennifer Corcoran for handling our publicity and uh, Jen Thompson for the technical aspect and the website. So let me just remind everybody about our speaker, Bob, tell you a little bit about Bob, Robert Thomas, and then we'll hand it over to, to Bob. So Robert Thomas, a fine art photographer and printer has photographed the works of over 70 artists in the Northeast whose mediums include watercolor, pastel, oil, acrylic, mixed media, and three-dimensional work. His objective is to be as original as the artist in accurately capturing original artwork and providing high quality archival reproductions. And Bob is a photographer who has won num numerous awards. And he definitely has a grasp on the technology um, of digital photography. So we will hand it over to Bob and I'm sure we're going to learn a lot. So thank you, Bob. Well, thank you. Uh, let me do a screen share here and see if I can find the one thing I want here. Here we go. All right. Um, tonight, we're going to do a little bit of review. Uh, I've received some good questions as well that I'm going to use as uh, a good focus for the session because I think it really hits into the key points of what we're trying to do here is get a, a good photograph that accurately represents your artwork uh, and then being able to uh, submit that properly. Uh, I say properly because there's different requirements for different jury shows uh, to, uh, to a jury show or to submit on the web. Um, so I'll do a little bit of review of what we talked about. And then I'm gonna to go to, uh, like I say, I've, I've received a couple of what I think very good questions that really hit the key points that uh, hopefully will become uh, takeaways for you uh, and be able to uh, uh, give you a chance to create an image, adjust it so it accurately represents the original and then be able to size it, name it, and submit it. So um, let's see if I can, there we go. So I'm not gonna go into you know, why we photograph our art. We talked about that, what camera to use. As I had mentioned, we're really uh, aiming at uh, the, the main camera that most of us uh, have with us almost all the time, our smartphone. And uh, over the last few years, they become very capable uh, to do the uh, photography for artwork and then uh, submittals. But I do wanna spend a little time going into uh, a review of the environment, just hitting on the key points, uh, what tools uh, are used or what applications are used to correct and adjust and um, then we'll go into a demonstration where uh, at the end of that, uh, we'll go into how to set up the file size, the format, uh, the color profile, and ultimately how to submit and send. So this is um, a repeat of the first session. Uh, as I had mentioned, uh, outdoors is, is generally uh, the easiest environment given that uh, you have good weather, <laughs> not like it's raining right now or where you may be or where it's uh, really cold or whatever. But, you know, a cloudy day is an excellent day to uh, photograph 
or uh, the lighting is excellent for photography of uh, artwork. The only, if you will, negative of a cloudy day is that if you have a, a textured piece and you want to be able to get a little bit of those textures to show up through shadows of uh, light, uh, a sunny day uh, will be a better, maybe a better choice for you. But if you have a lot of, let's say gold leaf or a shiny uh, uh, surface, you, you, may be able, you may have some issues with glare or hot spots and just moving the, the uh, image as the photo is being taken can reduce that glare. It also can change how the shadows are uh, seen across the work. So there are advantages for uh, both cloudy and sunny day. Although I find uh, cloudy days usually are, are better. So going indoors, um, we have different kinds of lights. And uh, these kinds of lights can give a little bit of a color cast to uh, the image when you photograph it. Um, usually a smartphone, I say usually uh, a smartphone will adjust for that difference between let's say uh, what I have here, a warm color temperature like uh, incandescent lights or a cooler, uh, uh, more blue kind of light fluorescent. Usually it will adjust for that, but I've received a good question where it seems that on some cases, you, it doesn't make the right kind of adjustment and you have to do it in one of the applications, which I'll demonstrate. Um, so the important point with interior lighting is that if you're lighting your artwork with lights, make sure they're the same. So if you're gonna use incandescent or quartz lamps and it's good to have two lights coming in from uh, an angle toward the artwork, make sure they're the same, don't mix incandescent or, and fluorescent. This just gives a, a, a view of what uh, warm versus uh, cool and daylight is. It shifts more towards the blue lights, but all cameras have something that's called white balance, which helps to neutralize the colors based on uh, a neutral color in, uh, in the image. And they should uh, correct for, if you're shooting in warm white, you can uh, correct for that more of a yellow tone. Or if you're shooting uh, with fluorescence, which are more of a blue type light, it should adjust for that. I'll say again, should. Sometimes you may find it doesn't and you have to make uh, a manual adjustment after you take the photograph. And I'll, I'll show you how we do that. Uh, I mentioned mixed lighting is bad, uh, maybe difficult to see in this image where I have cool light on the right and a warm light on the left, but uh, the right hand portion of this image is going to be uh, with a color shift and it's pretty difficult to uh, not impossible, but you, know, you want to minimize the amount of work uh, that you do after you take the picture. Ideally, you take the picture and all you have to do is crop it and uh, rename it and maybe size it. Many times you have to do a little bit of work, but you're giving yourself a lot more work if you use two different types of light. Uh, setting up the artwork, staging the artwork. Um, uh, an easel is nice if you have one. If you don't, an assistant, you know, somebody who can hold the artwork. Uh, you've got to look out for, uh, you know, the fingers. Sometimes you're really focused on getting that picture and 
you really should look all the way around the edges and making sure that it's being held straight. Um, if, uh, if you have an easel or you can rest it on a table, uh, that won't move. So you've got something that is stationary. And now the only thing that really is moving uh, is you as you're holding your uh, smartphone. And it's much easier to line this up or to align it so that again, there's less work after the picture is taken to get it uh, what I call square uh, and be able to uh, crop it. Um, I mentioned uh, uh, colors and it's good to have a neutral color wall. Uh, this is my uh, cave, my wife calls it. It's all gray from the ceiling to the walls and so on. Um, you don't need something quite that extreme, but uh, you want to stay away from bright colors. So if you're out in the middle of a room, like I am here, um, that should be okay. Just try to keep away from um, reflections off of uh, other color objects. Here's an example, something I actually set up in that uh, gray room where you've got this uh, green velvet, or it could be a, a red painted wall in your house. If you're close enough to it and the light that you're using to illuminate the artwork is also bouncing off this other color, you're going to get some contamination. Uh, and again, you could correct for it, but it's better to take the picture without the color contamination. Move to the center of the room so you're not getting strong reflections off of if you have uh, dark colored walls or, or whatever. So minimize uh, the, the uh, extra work that you have to do. This is probably the ideal setup if you have a tripod and you've got a way of putting this flat against a wall. Um, but if you get it on an easel, you just rotate the camera at the same angle as the artwork is on the easel. And I can show you that when I go through the demonstration. Uh, lighting, it shouldn't be straight on. It's good to have two lights so you get even distribution of the light and to have it at a 45, uh, have the two lights at a 45 degree angle. Now getting into the, the programs or the apps, as we call them all now for smartphones, the, the standard applications that come with uh, smartphones, be it Android phones or the Apple phones, could really be all that is all that is needed to take the picture. And in many cases, to actually uh, edit the picture and prepare it for uh, being submitted, uh, but we'll go into some uh, uh, apps that I talked about last time that have more uh, capability. But I'm really talking about here, taking the picture versus adjusting and correcting the picture so it looks like your original. Um, there are some uh, advanced applications that give a lot more control and adjustment. Um, I don't think that would be necessary for photographing artwork, but if you wanted to go out and let's say photograph waterfalls <laughs> and see the slow motion of the waterfall, you have uh, a lot of uh, manual adjustment that you can get with these other, uh, with these other applications. So these again uh, are really to take the picture versus edit or manipulate uh, once you have achieved the photo. One thing I uh, showed last week and I wanna reinforce it again this week is, and this helps to 
set things up when you take the picture. This is a screen taken from an iPhone, and I'm sure there's a similar setup on an Android phone, and it's in the camera settings. You can see that circled at the top of the screen here. So I'm, I've selected uh, the camera in settings, and I'm turning on the grid. And the grid gives you some alignment when you're looking at taking the picture to make sure that, or help you so that you may not be rotated as you're holding the phone or shifted uh, uh, horizontally or, ver or, or uh, vertically. Uh, all things that could be corrected uh, with the application I showed last uh, week, and I'll show you again uh, tonight, but if you get a well lined up photograph, you don't have to do any of that. You just need to go to uh, cropping around the artwork so that that's all that is ultimately in, in the image. So the grid allows you to better see the alignment before taking the picture. Um, camera settings, it's, it's best to use a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, I take a lot of pictures without it. It just uh, gives, it makes sure that you're gonna have an image that doesn't have any uh, motion, especially if you're in a, not a very well lit area. You know, these smartphones, they don't call them smart for nothing. They uh, figure out that you're in a little bit darker uh, environment and it will uh, give what's called a longer exposure. And sometimes a longer exposure, especially if you move while it's taking the picture, you won't have a crisp image. So either use a, a well-lit room uh, or outside and your, what's, I call it exposure or shutter speed will be fast enough to eliminate uh, motion blur that you might have. Yeah, a, a room like this that I'm in is certainly plenty for uh, for the smartphone. So it's, uh, I wouldn't be uh, uh, overly concerned, but it's just something to be aware of. I mentioned before that uh, this thing called white balance sets what is white or neutral in the image. And uh, smartphones really default to this auto white balance. Um, and I'll show you this last item uh, when I do my demonstration. This helps uh, set a neutral point um, for an image, a gray or a white card uh, is available to uh, set the white balance if you need to correct uh, that after you take the image. And I'll, like I say, I'll demonstrate uh, an example of that. All right, we talked about this, uh, this really uh, we're going to we're going to go through this in the demonstration. Uh, you know, first you take the image, uh, you've got to correct it, uh, align it. You'll then crop it, and we'll go through naming, uh, saving to your computer, uh, how you can retrieve it. Uh, either it's saved locally or it's saved uh, in uh, some. Uh, cloud storage, uh, the iCloud is Apple's uh, cloud storage. And then how you upload that to the application. We'll fill out uh, an application, uh, how to get a high quality image. It's very easy when you take a picture and I'll demonstrate this as well, that when you go to, let's say send it, you can send a fairly small file and that, generally isn't what you want to submit to a uh, application for a juried show. Uh, most uh, instructions for the juried shows will, will define uh, the size uh, of the file that they want to have submitted. And typically uh, it's something like, uh, like a one megabyte or so. 
Um, and you can see down here, the, uh, you can uh, send automatically, there's a selection to send a, a small file, which is fine for email and somebody looking at it uh, on a computer or looking especially on a phone, but uh, you really want to receive or send bigger files for uh, entry into these uh, juried shows. So the, once you take the picture, um, now you have to get it to look right. Now I, I've seen some questions about uh, modifying an image um, and that it's uh, not allowed to uh, modify an image. To me, that's different than correcting an image. Now, maybe that's semantics, but uh, if when you take the picture and you look at it on your phone or you send it to your computer and you look at it now on your computer and it looks yellow as compared to the original or it looks blue as compared to the original or it's the, the whole picture that you took is rotated and uh, you can't submit it that way by correcting the rotation and correcting maybe the uh, color correction. Uh, possibly you need to brighten it up a little bit or darken it. That to me is not modification in the sense that a juror would be looking at, well, this does not represent the original artwork. Uh, if you were to, uh, make a, a very blue image and it, it didn't look like that, um, that to me would be a modification of the original. All we're doing here is correcting so that it looks as close to the original as, as you can make it on the equipment you have. Now I'm saying that because um, once you send it somewhere else, they have different equipment. And you'd like to think that they have it, uh, especially a juror has their equipment calibrated so that the color shows accurately on their, uh, their monitor, but it might not. Uh, so just make sure that you get it looking right for you when you send it forward. That's really all that you all you have the ability to control. Now, these are some of the uh, questions that uh, came in last week, and I think they, uh, you know, I've touched on a couple of these topics before. Um, uh, you know, sometimes different cameras and different environments will uh, get an image that's either too blue or too red, and um, the prospectus for, let's say the show says no digital alterations. Well, I would scratch the word alterations out. And yeah, I, you know, I, I agree. You don't wanna have alterations so that it's different and alters from the original, but you can have corrections so that it's accurate. I, I, I haven't had any real discussions with jurors about that, but um, otherwise you may have to have, you know, a much fancier lighting setup and camera and all that, because I think every picture I've taken, I still have to make some corrections. So there's a difference between, as I say at the bottom, correction and alteration. Uh, the second question, after sending uh, to a sh uh, somebody for a show is a good idea to edit it. Um, and I think I mentioned last week, uh, it sort of depends <laughs> on what you mean by edit it. If you find that um, as you look at it again, it's darker than the original um, and you want to correct it and make it more accurate, um, I think that's fine. You may want to, if you had to make a significant change, you may want to resubmit that 
uh, but um, uh, an edit that changes the look as compared to the original is not a good idea. Um, so as I say, it's a difference between image correction and alteration. Now, here's a question that came in from Beverly. I see Beverly is here with us tonight. And I hope she doesn't mind my quoting her, but I think this is really the perfect question. And it really hits to the main thing that we're trying to accomplish with, uh, with this session. That is to get with the, the camera that you have, a accurate image that you can then submit uh, to the show. And, and what Beverly is saying here is that, you know, different times and different environments, sometimes you get a, a, a blue overcast or inside you may get a yellow cast. Um, you may go into a different environment and you see my different colors. It's not quite that rainbowy, but you know, you may get different, different hues. Um, and so what I would concentrate on tonight is how do you try to get first the photo and then get it to look like the original? Uh, as I mentioned, the, the smartphones uh, iPhone here, if, uh, if, if that's what you're using, Beverly, should come pretty close to correcting the, the colors. But to get it exact is really, really difficult. And uh, I mean, I've done a lot of uh, printing for various artists. And that's really the only time that I have been able to get as close and sometimes still not exactly the same as the original, because you have you have the original, and then you make a, a copy, you make a proof, a print, and you compare the two, and you may find you know the blue is off a little bit here, and so you've got to do an adjustment. But if you're working just on your computer, the best you can do is to get your the way it looks on your phone or your tablet or your computer the the device that you you are working with to look as close to the original as possible the only um i think i could admit somebody here the the only um thing to be aware of though is that once you get it to look right on your computer and when you send it off to somebody else it might be very it, i mean it's not going to be dramatically different unless their computer is way off kilter but i would expect jurors that are reviewing submissions have their computers uh, set up properly but it's going to be a little bit different so if you wanna get it to be exact, um, I mean, perfectly exact, it's gonna be, it's going to be uh, a challenge. You can get close and that's really uh, as far as you have to, I think, get. Beverly though sent me a couple examples which I'm gonna show, which are uh, not close. <laughs> some, of the, some of the yellow hue is, is really yellow. It's, it, you know, and I, I don't know what the, the original looks like because I don't have it, but these images that you sent to me, Beverly, uh, do need to be adjusted, do need to be uh, corrected. Um, and uh, there, there are ways to do that, and I'll go into that. Um, and uh, she uh, gave me, uh, the uh, information and I went on a link to see what uh, needed to be uh, done for the uh, Connecticut Pastel Society. Is that it, I guess? And um, it's very similar to what uh, needs to be done for uh, Madison Art as well. But uh, 
a, a straight on image, high quality. They want, once you've taken the image, they don't want to see all the surrounding material or uh, in some cases, not even the frame. They want to crop it right to just the painting. Um, and this is why when you're cropping in closely to the painting, you want to make sure it's straight before you crop. Otherwise, you're going to be cutting off corners of, of your image. Um, it says, do not make enhancements to your image. And uh, I again say, yeah, I, I agree. Don't, don't make it look different than your image. You know, don't, don't uh, really uh, increase, let's say the contrast. So it looks much more contrasty than the, the, the original. Don't uh, increase the saturation so that you have popping colors that really look exciting. Uh, maybe, maybe they don't look exciting, but it doesn't look like the original. To me, that's an enhancement, making it different than the original. But uh, if it has a blue overcast or a yellow cast, then that's an adjustment, a correction, not an enhancement. I know I'm harping on that, but uh, um, all right. And then um, I've always seen that when you're submitting, you uh, submit a what's called a JPEG image. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about this resolution. Uh, it, it seems to come up on uh, every gallery that I've uh, uh, seen submittals to and so on. But um, the main thing that is important is setting the size of the image, how many pixels. In this case, it's 900 pixels on the longest side. I'll show you how to do that. Um, that seems a little small, but that's what they were looking for. Um, I've seen uh, what seems to be common is 1,920, which was a dimension for early computer displays. And so you would be able to fill the whole display. But uh, you got to look at what the uh, requirements are for that particular show. It might be 900 for one show. It might be 2,000 pixels on the longest side for a different show. So you, you just got to look at the entry form. Uh, and then there are conventions for naming. Um, and uh, I did go to the website. So let's see what we can do here. But I really like uh, this question. Let's see if I can answer it. <laughs> Hopefully I can. All right. There we go. I, I was talking a little bit. I just want to restate this. And um, you know, you, you've got the original artwork. And um, you know, this is a pastel. Uh, you get certain pigments in the in the pastel or oils or watercolor, whatever your medium is. Uh, if you light it with certain types of lighting, even certain directions on the lighting, you might even get a different look of the original. But that's the starting point. Then when you go and do the image capture, you've got different lights, you've got a different room, you've got this digital thing, this phone or this camera that's going to convert it, uh, transform it into uh, into a digital file where, where it's a, a physical medium here. So it's gonna change uh, potentially. You know, the, the smartphones have a lot of uh, capability to automatically adjust, but again, they're not perfect. And therefore you may have to go to image adjustment, but when you go to image adjustment, you're going to a different monitor, you're going to a different computer, it's going to potentially transform uh, the image again. Um, then once you get it looking good on your phone, if you're not going to a different monitor, let's say you're doing all this work on your phone and you send it into the jurors to review, 
that's going again to a different monitor. Now, I don't want you to get all concerned thinking that they're going to change dramatically. There will be a slight difference going from each of these steps. Um, if somebody, if you were to send an image, uh, let's say, onto Facebook, um, and 10 different people looked at it, they might, if they were really looking closely, they might see a very slight variation between them, just because the computers are slightly different. What you want to do is get it, I say it yet again, as close when you take the picture, as close as you're comparing it to your original, and then hoping that when you send it a downstream, in this case to a juror, that uh, they'll have a, uh, a reasonable setup on their monitor uh, that will uh, accurately represent the uh, picture file that you sent to them. All right. Here's some of Beverly's dilemma. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm mentioning uh, this, with, but Be Beverly, they, these were great. They, they really helped to show. And, and I hope that uh, people can see here what challenge that she is faced with. And I assume a number of you are faced with. You take a picture and uh, you get a different kind of a cast to it. Uh, this image on the left here, and, and I don't know if, because I don't have the original, so I don't know exactly which is closest to the original, but this you know, seems uh, subdued. It seems to certainly have a yellow cast. Um, and uh, maybe potentially even not as, crisp or as in focus. Uh, you, you could debate that a little bit, but it certainly is a, is a color hue difference. This, if I were to guess, and uh, Beverly, you can raise your hand here, if this is more accurate, or maybe it's more on the blue side, but uh, certainly it, it is uh, different than the one on the left. Yeah, the one on the right is more accurate, so, okay. but it's a little more blue than it is. And so I was trying to take it in another light to get some of the, the brightness where the sun was raking across it. And then and it turned out too yellow and fuzzy. So it's like, I'm ready to shoot myself. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and what we'll do, I'm going to do a demonstration in a minute, but these are very good examples of what, like I say, uh, obviously you're facing and I would expect uh, a number of people are facing and maybe one day you get a great shot and another day you have to take several. Um, but you get one that is close and rather than trying to get the perfect photograph, you wanna get one that is, you know, whoops, crisp and so on like this one on the right and then we can adjust it. We can take some of the blue out uh, by shifting the, uh, uh, the color balance slightly. And then again, you're looking at it either on your Dell computer. Yeah, because in one of the emails you said you, you save the files or you're looking at them on a Dell computer. And you want to make sure it, uh, the adjustment looks like the original. Uh, here's another example. Um, this is also a little bit, you know, you look, you have to look a little closer, but in here, it's, it seems to have more of a, a warmer tone or a, you know, a yellow tone, whereas the one on the right, uh, less so, especially you can look down here in the grass area. Uh, certain areas down here on this path. And so what you want to do is again, adjust, and maybe you'd start with this one being closer to the original to, uh, to get them to, to uh, get as close to your, your artwork. So this is, uh, 
This can come up with uh, different environments, different lighting. Uh, although, like I say, typically the smartphones can, can adjust for that. If you take the picture and it doesn't, there are ways to correct it uh, in, uh, in these uh, apps that I, that I talk about. Okay, so I think this shows, and, and I, would, I would guess there's a number of people shaking their heads, uh, yes, I faced this. <laughs> I've faced this same challenge myself. So the question is, how do we, uh, how do we address it? All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, come up with a way to uh, uh, demonstrate and achieve this. Um, just a quick review on uh, the applications. I'm not gonna go through all the screen share and all that stuff from last time. And if you've downloaded uh, uh, either the video or both the video from last session, as well as the slide set, I did a lot of screen captures walking through using uh, Snapseed um, as well as image size. And there are other uh, tools that are available if you have a computer, uh, like if you're uh, saving the file on a tablet or a computer, um, you, you, there are standard applications that allow you to uh, do uh, some of these edits as well as image size. And I'll, I'll give some examples of those as well. Um, okay, I was just gonna go through, I've, right from the uh, website. Uh, this is uh, maybe a little more detailed than what uh, you folks have up at the Madison Art Society, mainly because it's probably people from uh, a, a greater background of uh, uh, computers, not all part of uh, one uh, art society. But if I click on this link, can you see that? Does that come up uh, on the screen? the Connecticut Pastel Society? Yes? The U, yeah, the website is there, the URL is there. Okay, good. All right, you see the uh, website. And um, then yes. if you want to submit, this is, the, you know, the instructions. That, this that's is sort not of, going. I'm sorry? That's not showing. When you click on it, the website's not showing. Oh, okay. Is this photo preparation showing? No. Mm -mm. Hmm. All right. Let me see what I'm doing here. I just stopped my share. Uh, let's see. Oh. Can you see that now? Yes, you can right. see that. Okay, so um, th this uh, shows how to, or it goes through some of the steps on how to uh, uh, edit your images, you know, before adjusting, you know, they're saying the resolution or size, do any cropping or straightening, which is what we had talked about uh, uh, before. Um, they're talking about the size uh, that is required. And then they give some, some applications. These applications require uh, a computer or uh, a tablet. And what uh, we really uh, spent time on and will continue to is uh, using your uh, smartphone. Um, but still there's some good examples here if you're using one of these uh, computers where you can uh, uh, click on the examples, as I will here, and it probably won't be able to see it. No. Uh, new share. Uh, maybe I should stop trying to do all these other shares. Go back to this. Okay. Um, 
yeah, I'm not able to shift between all the different shares. So let me get to my demonstration. And uh, it'd probably be easier to see the things than my trying to flip through those uh, shares. Okay. Stop share. Seems to be a fun day today. If we're getting mm -hmm. there, I should. Telling me I have to install a plugin. I don't know why I have to do that. Okay. Tap on screen mirroring. All right. Finally, hopefully, you see this thing that says uh, screen mirroring. All right. Can you see my camera? All right, so now finally, we can get to the uh, demonstration. I'm not gonna move around quickly here because I don't want anybody to get motion sickness. Mm -hmm. But um, here's an example that I'm gonna use for photographing this artwork. And if you notice, I've got the grid set up and especially down here in the dark below the, uh, the image, you can see it and it's lined up, I wanna back up a little bit to get the uh, photo fully in there. Now this may be an extreme landscape size image, but that's a photo taken in sort of natural light. Now what I'm going to do is change my lighting here. So I've got uh, so this is sort of a, as you can tell, sort of a yellow light. It's probably extreme from what you had, Beverly, but try to just trying to get an example of how to correct if an image is taken in, in yellow light. Is, so LED, there, is LED a yellow light? Um, LEDs can be just about any color light. Um, and that's what I have here. I have the ability to adjust my lights to, uh, you see summer, sunset, I don't know what romance is. <laughs> and well, we have steampunk light, but LED lights can be adjusted to, uh, some of the LED lights could be adjusted to just about any color. Typically, if you buy them for home lighting, uh, it's either what's called warm light or it's daylight, which is the, the cooler. Uh, I think most of us are used to, for years, the uh, tungsten kind of lights. And in uh, living rooms and so on, you would, you would uh, you'd want the uh, warm light. But uh, so I'm going to set back to daylight there. And now I'm going to show you how you can edit this, these two images, uh, to get color correction. So I'm going to go to my uh, application, uh, the Snapseed application. And oh, 
I have one of your images there. I'm going to open up a new one. Oh, gone the wrong way. Ah. Don't want to open that. There it is. Latest images. Here's the one that I shot that was red. You can probably see that. And uh, again, I'm in this application called Snapseed. I go down to the bottom center of the screen for tools, click on that. And if you recall uh, last week, we went through a demonstration of how to set the perspective. I'm gonna take a look at that. So that's in the second row, second from the left perspective. And I've got the free set there. And I can, again, I like to use these little uh, it sort of pens, allows with my fat fingers, allows me to move things easier. But the grid gets, if you can see the grid is getting a little bit more um, higher resolution. I notice that I've got this tilted back a bit, so I may have to adjust here and here to get that lined up. How does the bottom look? That's got to be adjusted here. So it takes a little bit of moving around to get this squared up. But if I had a tripod or if I were a little more steady and taking the picture or took my time a little bit better, I might not have to do that kind of straightening because I've got it straight when I took the picture. Uh, but now that I've straightened it uh, in Snapseed, I click at the lower check mark there that commits the changes that I've made to the image. All right. Now I go back to tools. I want to crop this in the upper uh, top row on the right it says crop. And I just pull down from the top and from the bottom, doesn't matter which order you go in. And then the sides till all you really have is the image, the artwork selected. You can still see, you know, what was the total image and, uh, you know, the total picture I took. But just like it said on that uh, entry form, you know, you should crop it to just the artwork. Now, this change hasn't taken place until I click again on that little check mark, and you'll see the screen just pop up with the, uh, the photo of the artwork itself. There's the artwork, but the colors are off. And now I could be looking at the original here, and I'm looking at the screen. Um, I go back to tools and there's something in the top row called white balance. Now, this example is probably a little bit more of an extreme than what you would see with a slight shift, but still I think it'll allow you to uh, see how you can make this change. Um, I clicked on white balance, this screen comes up and allows me to select a temperature adjustment, again, temperature warmer is yellow, cooler is blue. But the nice thing about this application is I have this little eyedropper and it opens up this uh, sort of uh, magnifying glass and I can move this around to a point. See how it's shifting the colors? 
dramatically. Hope you're not getting sick now, but no. It, you, what you want to do is pick a neutral point on, I'm picking a white flower. And that is pretty close. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, exact, but it's pretty close, much closer than that pretty yellow orangey image I took originally. If I like that, I can always go back and make another adjustment. If I like that, I can just now click on the check mark in the lower right. And now I have an image that is much closer to the original. Uh, like I say, you probably wouldn't start out having uh, the image that far off, but with this, you, you can have a, a fairly simple adjustment. Now, what I'm gonna do is close out of this screen share for now and just show you, well, actually I could show you with my camera. All right, I'll make the motion before I, if, if you have a piece of artwork that doesn't have a neutral color, and you're you're going to have to make the uh, um, white balance or color correction. You can get either you know a, a neutral piece of white paper or a gray. You know these are what's called gray cards. It's got a a white and a gray and a black. I'm not sure what the black would be used for, but this is like my room. And when I go to take the picture, I wouldn't put the strap over it, <laughs> but I would have that in the image. I find a way to get it in the image. I'd have it in the image as you see here. And I wouldn't crop that out until I did the white balance adjustment. I take the picture like I'm about to right now and I have the gray card in there and that gives me the neutral point to adjust uh, the, the image against. So that's a way of uh, adjusting um, the uh, color tone that you might get uh, with with a uh, with a picture that you take. I'm going to close out this share and go back. Bob, there is a question here, which sure. I mean, I know you're covering lighting quite a bit. Is there a selection of lighting options on the iPhone? If yes, where is it? That's from Lucia Sean Wen Sobel. Okay. Um, there. The iPhone uh, does something that uh, is supposed to help out with our uh, uh, our vision. It's called night mode, and it uh, removes some of the blue from the um, display that you see, and that's the the color adjustment that is made with the with the phone itself. And I, I would suggest turning, like if you can set uh, when this night mode, this shift of removing more blue from the display that is shining in your face, um, you can set the time when that happens. I, I just suggest with an iPhone, if you have this night mode to turn it off because uh, Beverly, I don't know if you're taking a picture at a, at a let's say a later time of the day, um, you'll actually have a different look on the screen with night mode on versus off. I mean, it's a good thing if you're reading a lot of emails or you're reading a book or something like that on your tablet or on your phone, but it does shift the colors uh, a bit 
when uh, when you go between night mode and not. So I don't know if I answer the answer the question as far as color shift with an iPhone. Um, I, when the question was asked about, uh, is there a different light? Uh, it's really not the illumination. You don't, you're not like a flash uh, on the iPhone, but uh, yeah, night mode can get, can get in the way of uh, color correcting. Um, all right. Let's see. Go back to share the screen. So that hopefully uh, went over again the capturing of the image, the straightening of the image, which, as I say, for a, a smartphone and for uh, the standard applications that you get on a computer. Snapseed seems the only one that allows you to sort of pull the edges to straighten things uh, out. Uh, if, you, if you take your picture and you've got it nice and straight, when you take the picture, you won't have to worry about that. All you'll need to do is go and crop because all the edges are square. But if you don't have it perfectly straight, uh, then uh, the smart seed, uh, Snapseed rather is, uh, is a good app to use. If all you have is it rotated, uh, every cropping tool will allow you to just rotate it so it's straight up and down. But if it's tilted and rotated, like a lot of the images I take, you have to use a, a smarter tool like Snapseed. Um, so you get the crop, and then you can uh, save the image. Now I wanted to show, there was a question on uh, sizing uh, the, the uh, image. So we'll take that one that I just worked on. Let me just open it up and I'll go to screen share in a minute. back to Snapseed, there it is. All right, I'm gonna show you my uh, phone again. There, you should see All right, we're back to uh, Snapseed. I have gone through the steps of color correction uh, and cropping. And now what we want to do is resize it and rename it so it can be sent uh, uh, into a juried entry. So you click on the uh, export because I've finished everything I needed to do in uh, the correction of the image. And uh, I'm gonna save a copy of this, save it back to my photos uh, program. And it is now saved and I can get that from, um, the resize program. Well, there it is, resize. So uh, as we looked at it uh, last week, this is the blank screen that, that comes up and you want to uh, open a file. Oh, here we are up in the upper left. And here is the image. So I've pulled this file uh, out of my uh, photos library 
And you see at the uh, top, I had preset this, but you can uh, select what is required for the entry of that show. I forget what uh, the Pastel Society was, but it was different than 1,920. I think it was maybe 800. 900. Ah, all right. Thank you. Just put in the 900 and I went back and it automatically, when you have that little linkage between the two uh, highlighted that it's on, it automatically adjusts the height. So in this case, it's uh, 900 by uh, 330. And you can see it's gonna make a pretty small file um, just below the, the image itself, the picture uh, itself. You see it was originally about uh, 1.7 megabytes and making it 900 pixels wide by 330 high, it's gonna make a relatively small file. But that's what was requested for, uh, for this show. For uh, Madison, as I've seen, it's typically 1920. Click on the link and now it's gonna go about a, 500 kilobytes. So it will automatically resize the uh, file to meet the requirements for the, uh, the entry. Now what you need to do is save, save now that you've, re, you've uh, sized it, you wanna save it and you want to uh, give it a name that matches the requirements for Oh, I just went to sleep. There we are. Um, the, the requirements for the entry. Now I click on this right here in the center, uh, not in the center, but this little sort of triangle here. And that allows me to define where I wanna put it so I can attach it to an email or to a form. Uh, and it also allows me to rename the file. So I'm gonna go and click on that. And now I have, uh, you can see um, different places. I can send it as an email, but it'll be some funny file name. In this case, I wanna save it to my files. If you're working on a computer, you could send it to your computer and then just rename it uh, on your computer. But it has been resized now. And I'm gonna save it to files. And once I click on save it to files, I created this directory, photos of art. And you see this, this is the file name, nothing like what you need, but it's highlighted and I can go in there and this screen comes up. It's a lot easier if you're working on a computer, you can rename some of these files, but, uh, Let's say it's Robert. Then I hit underscore Thomas. And and so on, you know. Oh yeah, that's how you spell it. <laughs> there. Um, and, and what else, you know, it may be the dimensions, it may be the price, um, it may be the name of the show, whatever the requirements are. And once you hit done, which is either here or here, that will be saved in that directory. And now I'm gonna go to the Madison Art uh, website and I'm gonna bring that, that file, I'm gonna get that file and attach it to the, uh, to the entry form. So I'm gonna go on, I'm on my phone again. You can do this on your computer. If you have already saved the file on your computer, I open up uh, down here is my browser. 
I don't want to go to American Express unless you want to <laughs> go to the favorites. And I have a uh, link to your sample form. I mean, you would you would click on the appropriate link for whatever show it might be. You might have to uh, navigate around a little bit to get directly as we are here on this form. And you're looking at it again through my screen on an iPhone. It would look uh, different on a, on a computer screen. It wouldn't be so vertical like this. Um, so you fill out the form. Uh, since this is on a, a phone, it, it just auto fills all this information, which is nice. But uh, and uh, you know you fill the for, uh, you know the title. What did I call it? Floral. And. Uh, Uh, we don't need to uh, take too much time here, but uh, landscape and floor. Now the, the key thing here, and I sort of skipped over it, is right here, you got to pick the file for the uh, entry. Okay, so I filled this out, it's still ready to be uh, chosen. So I click on that. And I'm going to go to, in this case, I'm going to browse and I'm going to look, or is it back in my photo library? Photos of art. Oh, the test. Oh, here it is. Where is that? Oh, that isn't it. Well, maybe it hasn't gotten up there yet. Sorry about this. It's trying to find. Was it in your desktop? I, desktop. Um, well, that's what I was looking at. I guess that's where I should have saved it, but uh, I'm not fine. I've I've saved it in a place that I can't uh, re. Uh, Didn't you put in photos of art? Yeah, photos of art. I did. Uh, I, saw that. I saw that. Folder. There was a blue yeah. folder there you had. It was yeah, iCloud that's what... Drive and then photos of art. No, it's not there. Documents. For some reason, I, I don't see it in this location. I'll, maybe I'll work last time. I thought you put it under desktop. On the well, desktop. here's desktop, photos of art. Yeah, photos of art. And, go back yeah, to photo, did, what if you go back to photos of art? Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. You're in there, Nat, I, right there? Yeah, in this? Right here, I just went into it. Oh, you went into that, it. We don't see you clicking, I see, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, hmm. and that's on iCloud Drive, and I uh, I saved it in my files. Yeah, he said. So I should have. Let me just see if I've still got it here. This is what we go through, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good this real is a good life. demonstration then. <laughs> so here it says photos of art, iCloud Drive, desktop, photos of art. Oh, you know what I didn't do? There's one important thing that you need to do here. Hit save. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. 
So I didn't uh -huh. click on this. <laughs> so that's why we didn't see it. So let me Details. click on that. Details. This is a good demonstration. And oh, yes, this is the one thing I don't like about this uh, resize app. It's free, but you get ads. All right, so now let's go back to our form and see if it's, it's iCloud Drive, I mean, desktop, photos of art, and look there, mm -hmm. right here. Oops, we're looking at every slide, unfortunately. Right here, it is. So it works when you press save. Yes. <laughs> so now what I do is I click on that and you can see it is connected okay. to, to, the, uh, to the form. And you can just uh, send that forward. Just so I'm glad I made that uh, error <laughs> in a way. It just shows that you got to, you know, go through the steps and do the save. It is a little bit easier if you're doing it on a computer. Um, the the screen is a little bit smaller and so on. But uh, hitting the save button always uh, makes it a lot better. So I'm going to stop this share and go back to the presentation. And I'm way out here a little bit. OK. Page back down to where I was. And we went to the submission form. Now, the last thing I have before maybe opening up to additional questions, and if you want me to demonstrate again something, that's fine. How much time have we got here? We're in. We're at 8 o'clock, um, 8.01. Okay. All right. No. Um, uh, there's been this discussion about um, pixels per inch or dots per inch, DPI, PPI, DPI, sizing for the file. And I, I really don't want to get into uh, a debate with a juror or a uh, gallery about that. But essentially, um, when you're dealing with the web and sending files over the web, the most important thing in sizing are really two things is, you know, the number of pixels, you know, be it 900 pixels or 1900 pixels on the longest dimension. Um, that sets the size of the file, as well as something I didn't go over this week, but I talked about last week was the quality setting for the JPEG. Um, if you have a, an image that has a lot of uniform color, it's, it's going to save it as a relatively small file, uh, even though you may set, up the, set the quality setting pretty high on the, the JPEG. But there'll be no difference when you uh, change the pixels per inch. I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but essentially, this is a quote uh, I took from several different uh, discussions. Uh, so it, it, it says that if you save an image or send an image out as 72 pixels per inch and another at 300 pixels per inch and you save them both for the web, which is what we're doing, you know, they're gonna be sent off on an email. Um, they're both gonna, they're both going to be the same size. And I could, I can give you a, a demonstration of that. We'll um, stop the share. And I'm going to go to uh, Lightroom. OK, so this is another uh, of my wife's uh, images. And um, 
Now it's a, it's a large file. You can see down here, I think on the screen, it's a very large file. It's not the kind of thing that you're gonna send on an email. It's 53 megabytes in size. And so um, I'm going to save this uh, as you would for, um, let's say the Madison uh, entry. So I'm gonna, this is a, a program that you can use on the computer, allows you to export the files. Um, and I'm gonna give it a custom name. You know, this, this is just for this example. And uh, I'm gonna save it as uh, 1920 pixels on the long edge. And I'm gonna give it a, res a resolution of 72, okay? 72 pixels per inch, which a lot of entry forms say, you know, either 72 or 300. So uh, here's a quality setting that I can set on the JPEG. And now I'm gonna export it to um, a directory that I set up for uh, Madison Art Society. So that uh, is crunching through, making this a smaller file eventually. And uh, there it is. So this image is now, instead of 52 megabytes or 53 megabytes in size, it's been saved as about two megabytes, 1.7. I don't know if you can see that. I, I may have to do the share on that. So what I'm gonna do is create an export at 300 pixels per inch. I'm gonna change the name of this to 300. Well, heck, let's, let's go all out here. We're gonna make this 3000 pixels per inch, which is maybe not realistic, but let's see if that has any difference in the size of the file. I just clicked on export and it's going through exporting that. I probably have to do the screen share to show you the file. Can you see that uh, directory or do I have to uh, open that up as a separate screen share. Do you see the two files? No, okay. All right, let me do that again. There we are. Can you see it now? You should be able to see image at 72 pixels per inch is 1.7 megabytes in size. Image at 3000 pixels per inch is 1.7 megabytes in size. There's really no difference at all. The, the size of the file is uh, established by those two things, which is how many pixels you put in it either 1900 or 900 or whatever the show requires and the the quality setting that you set um, you set for the jpeg but if a juror or a, a gallery says you must send these to me at 300 pixels per inch well just set that setting uh, but it won't change the size of the file that's important for when you get around to printing. And we're not talking about that today. All right, sorry for a couple of little flub ups there that might have caused some confusion, hopefully not. Um, are there questions from this uh, set of discussions? Anybody, here's your chance to Get some expert advice from Bob. And, and I will offer to the group that, you know, if you're, um, you know, you'll get this uh, recording 
and see where I forgot to hit save. And you'll also get uh, you know, the, the presentation just as you did before. But if when you're getting ready for um, th uh, the show and you've got a question, you, you know, you've got my email, you can send me an email and I'll, I'll uh, try to answer that because I know how these things can, can get sometimes uh, a month down the road from, uh, from the presentation. I just suggest you do a little practicing just like I did for, for the first session myself. Um, try the things out. Um, and if you have some questions, you know, you can shoot me an email. Bob, you said you saved it on iCloud, you, you know, when you did it. If you said right. just save it on your photos, would it yep. say your name and Bob Thompson, floral, blah, blah, blah. So it would be there, but you just don't see it until you send it out somewhere. Right, right. It, it, the, the reason I saved it uh, on iCloud and in that directory was because uh, I had that uh, set up so that when I click, when I opened up the form for uh, the Madison Art Society, I could show how that could get attached. I didn't want to go back to my uh, photos. Uh, but you could, directory. right? Yeah, yeah. I would, uh, I would you, you could save it to photos. Um, I'd probably put it uh, in a directory uh, on my uh, computer drive because um, you're going to have two of the same, it's going to be named differently, but they're the same image. One which will probably be quite a bit smaller than your original, but you could do that. You could put it in photos. You just okay. want to be able to find it and find the right one when you attach it to the entry form. So from your iPhone, I've never done that. I've never gone to iCloud from my iPhone. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, you that can was, do that. And it, it, like you said, me too. That might have yeah. to be another one down the line, another presentation, because it's the, the Google Drive, the iCloud, all of these. Yeah, they've got all these crazy things. Yeah. Those options that some people I'll, might I'll not put a couple of slides together that show screenshots of saving to your photos, your photos library from your iPhone, and and then being able to pick it up uh, and uh, enter it on the form. That's probably two or three slides, but uh, yeah, it's a good question. If you're used to doing these things on the phone and then saving it back into your uh, photos library on your iPhone, um, then, uh, then you wanna see how that works. Yeah, normally I save it, I send it as an email to myself download the email to my big computer downstairs, name it there and save it there. So right. I've never done it on my iPhone. I've never used the iCloud library. Right, so. okay. That's the way we do it too, Beverly. Yeah. You mm -hmm. save it on your computer. Well, I, I was um, not sure that everyone had a separate computer. If all you have is a phone, uh, you can save it to uh, iCloud, but in this case, you want to just save it to photos, which you can do directly on your phone as well. So I'll make up uh, whatever, two, three, maybe four slides that shows screenshots of how you would uh, save it to your photos library directly. So you don't have to, like you're doing, uh, Beverly, emailing it to yourself, then going to your other computer, and then changing the name at that other computer uh, and then saving it uh, in your photos library or you know, picking it up from your, uh, your other computer. Has anyone else tried practicing? Any of our other people here can unmute yourself and answer. We're shy tonight. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> after I didn't hit the save button, everybody should uh, feel comfortable. Yeah. 
I haven't I haven't downloaded the two apps yet. I was going to try to relook at the the video two or three times to know that what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, you know, that that's a great way to do it because, uh, you know, I've looked uh, on a lot of things on, let's say, YouTube, uh, where I'm trying to learn a technique, um, you know, on editing myself on uh, programs. And it's so nice where you can put it in pause, you can back it up, you can watch that section again. Just skip over that part where I didn't hit the save button. It'll, you'll save well, about Bob, that was two or three minutes. Yeah. That was the best. Well, actually, it was a good. It was it a good was really example. Really, the of, best lesson of all. Yeah, it's true. Uh, now we'll all remember to hit save. That's right. Now, I, I, when I, I, on your iPhone it, and you're doing editing just on your iPhone, they have a thing called brilliance or you know, you know, brightening. Would that make yeah. it whiter? Uh, it, it what it actually does is it's a combination of things. It sort of uh, brings the saturation up a little bit. It may change also the contrast. It's um, it it may it may be more of a manipulation of your photo, unless when you bring up the brilliance, it's going to bring it things brighter and also a little bit more saturated. But you could use that if it makes the picture on your phone look closer to your original. Um, I generally don't make those adjustments if I'm working with some artwork. I may do that with uh, the kind of photos that I take, landscape photography. I may want to bring up the brilliance and make it a, a, a more vibrant day where it wasn't quite as vibrant uh, when I took the photo. But uh, I, I keep going back to the point that whatever adjustments you make, you want them to not make a, a different looking image than the original. You want to make it look more like the original. Um, I, I think uh, exposure to make it brighter or dimmer would be a, a more natural adjustment to make. Um, but you can, you can try any of these adjustments. And like I say, if it makes it look closer to the original, then go with that adjustment. So the exposure one might make, I was trying to say, can you do anything to make the white look whiter so less yellow? Oh. Um, well, the, the best thing to do with that is to uh, change the, uh, I forget what the term is. I'm, you're not gonna see the screen open up because I'm bringing up my photos. I forget what they call it in photos. So I'm opening up an image, which of course you can't see. And I'm gonna click on edit. And now, of course I'm on a computer, which is different than on my phone. On the computer, the Photos app has all kinds of extra stuff, which they make them all the same. So I'm, I'm clicking on an image on my phone, and then it says Edit. And when I click on Edit, it has these things. Exposure is the first one. But what I would do, again, I'm talking about an iPhone. It'd be similar on an Android phone, but it probably says something different. There's something called warmth. I don't know why they picked these words, but <laughs> warmth. So I'm I'm looking at one of your images now, Beverly. Yeah. I've opened it up, and uh, if I move the warmth over in one direction, uh, in this case negative, it's less warm, and therefore it's getting cool which means it's getting blue. Or, yes, that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> if I go the other direction and get positive in, in the setting, the image overall, the, it, it's not just one area, but the image overall is getting more yellow or warmer. So warmth is uh, in, in the Photos app is really adjusting sort of the, the overall color temperature of the image. Okay. Um, there are ways that you can change uh, just, let's say, the highlights. 
but uh, that would be more in brightness, that kind of thing. But if you've got a, if you've got something that's too blue overall or too yellow overall, what you're really looking to do is to change the uh, color balance. In the case of the iPhone, it's warmth. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so it's 819. Any other questions for Bob? So I wonder what oh, that I... would be for an Android, what Bev just asked. So if it's warmth on the I iPhone, yeah, whatever that setting I'll, would be. I'll look Android. it up, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll look that up. Um, you know, I'm, I, if, if they were using a more accurate term, it would be color balance or white mm -hmm. balance something like that um, mm -hmm. that's essentially what you're doing when you're adjusting the warmth on uh, on the iphone so okay well i think two things that are very clear from tonight is to save your image after you edit it <laughs> absolutely and don't and don't worry about dpi <laughs> Yeah, Get but it. also Worry about yeah. pixels only 900 if asked for like the yep. pastel society, generally speaking 1920 on the widest measurement. Those are the two things right. that are, are jumping out. Yeah, yeah, so when you're resizing it, you know, you, you want to uh, uh, look at what the requirements are for that entry. They may be different. So if you sized it to 900 last time, it may be different. So just make sure you check what the instructions are for that entry. Uh, All right. Well, this was timely because as everybody knows, we have a juried show coming up and the submissions will begin. I think July 25th is when online submissions will okay. begin for about a week. And so we will put to use everything that you've gone over with us, Bob. In order to be able and to like I say, if there are questions there. that come into Jen or to you or Marianne or somebody has a question, you want to shoot me a email, you know. Well, wow, that's, uh, that's very kind of you, because what we generally do is with our perspectives that will go out soon. Um, we give a little bit, we give some instructions as to how to submit online, nothing like the detail that you've gone into, of course. But then we have a support person available to the members, to the artists that are submitting. And it's right. generally it's generally Melissa Mosi and or Janine Robertson. So if they're stumped, then Bob, you can be their go to. Okay. Yeah. Be glad <laughs> sometimes to. Sometimes it does get complicated if uh, something's on the cloud and they don't know how to help the people pull it off or that's even a little bit beyond me. I need to get that storage system figured out better you know yeah as well so all right well, as i one other little tip as i mentioned to you before the whole group came on back up your files have yes. more than one backup you don't want to lose these files yeah i'll and leave you with that in, in a little nutshell tell us what you told me and jen before about the three systems for backing up <laughs> Uh, well, the, the uh, uh, best way to make sure that you won't lose your files is what's called three, two, one. You have three backups, believe it or not, for your, oh, you have three, three versions of a file. So you have uh, one that's maybe your working uh, file on your computer or on your iPhone. Uh, if you're doing things on a computer, you have a, an external drive as a backup that backs up, you know, automatically any changes that you make to the files. And uh, so that's two versions of the file. And then you have one offsite. Uh, hopefully you never have any catastrophic uh, accident or fire or something like that. But that's where the cloud comes in. It's something off-site. Uh, it could be off-site if uh, 
you uh, have an office that's away from your home and you have a second hard drive that uh, is stored at the office that you uh, update periodically. But the cloud can get updated uh, uh, almost immediately. So uh, that maybe is uh, the overly cautious way, but uh, the way that is dangerous is one, <laughs> one version of the file. Mm. Yeah. All right. Two well, is better. Well, that's important. And yeah, everybody yeah. hopefully will heed that advice. So it's 824. Do we have one last comment or question for Bob before we all sign off? Well, I just want to apologize again to everyone. I'm sorry that I sent you the wrong Zoom um, link. I That's promise not, I won't do it again. <laughs> don't worry, Marianne. You're busy. We're all busy. And I'm glad that the, the 20 of us that did sign on stuck with it and tried and, and then got your new email. Okay, good. So for the people that pooped out on us, they're going to have to watch this if they decide to, if they can find it. As everybody knows, this will be on our website probably very soon because Jen Thompson is so wonderful at dealing with the technology for us. So you can um, refer to this once again, watch the previous one from last week by Bob or watch this one again. And I think we'll all be much further along than where we were before you came and spoke to us, Bob. So we very much appreciate it. All and right. everybody that's helped, thank you very much for pulling this together. Marianne and everybody else, Bev and Jen, the two Jens. So thank Bob. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Hillary, and thank you, okay. Jen. All right. Thanks again, everybody. And thank All you, right. Bob. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank Take you, care. Bob. <laughs>